This ID7 Pro can charge with a peak of 192 kilowatt at a DC fast charger. Now this speed is limited by the 500 amp limit that CCS standard is giving you. So when you charge at a at Ionity or the hypercharger, the peak amp that the charger can give you is 500 amp and since the battery of the ID7 has a pretty low voltage under 400 volt that limit is reached very very early and this affects other cars as well when you charge a Tesla Model 3 at Ionity you get around 190 kilowatt because you reached at 500 amp limit but when you charge at a Tesla supercharger which doesn't have that limit you get over 200 kilowatt so the question is if I charge my Volkswagen ID7 at a Tesla supercharger charger will I get more than 192 kilowatt we'll see so I'm combining the drive to the Tesla supercharger with a power drive video so I'm filming this for two videos I want to test uh, and I have to get the, the battery at temperature anyways and it's 80 kilometers away so I can combine this that's cool uh, even though I could of course warm up the battery with a button but I want to see how, what the driving does as well how do you charge at a Tesla supercharger when you're not a Tesla? It's a bit different because on public chargers you have a card or you have a chip or something and then you just hold it there and then uh, can charge. At a Tesla supercharger you don't have that because it was designed only for Tesla. All have plug and play. It's just not cold that way. They plug in and a second later they start charging. They communicate with the car. Everything's fine. It's awesome. But now since they're open the supercharger network to other brands, they have to do it differently. Well, it, luckily, first they, they changed most of the chargers to CCS as well because Tesla Model Y and Model 3 are using CCS standard in Europe as well. So this works. So the only thing you need is connect to the charging network and this is done via the Tesla app. Download the app and then you can see in the map where is the charger you want to use. You select the charging stall and then you say, say start charging. It's very very easy and also you can have a plan with Tesla where the prices are even lower. Awesome! So here I am, I had to park between those two stalls here and I have to charge with the left one or when you go from the car or the right one and then nobody can charge here because my plug is on the right not on the left and the cable is too short to go forward in and then charge with this one but we'll see what the charge speed will be. Then let's do this, fire up the Tesla app and select this charger, it should be 1 B right yeah 1 B let's do this he says I can plug in and charge moment of truth will we get more than I think the car shows 187 I'm charging let's see No, <laughs> no, 179 kilowatt is the limit and I think I will put in the, the video of the Ionity charger where it was at 16% if I got also 179 in the car it's, it should be a bit less so it's, it still has the 500 amp limit uh, so you don't get faster charging at Tesla awesome in the app we can still stop the charging here so if you have a car that doesn't have like me a stop charging button you can do it in here and you see your charge power 186 kilowatt and that you charged 4.4 4 kilowatt hours and your state of charge then we stop charging here huh it worked really fast to stop charging awesome 
So the charging power is not a reason to charge at a Tesla supercharger, but maybe the price is. Sometimes it's really cheap and when you have that plan, it's really a good price. And they work really well, they get maintained really well. Um, the only thing is you have to use an app, you, have to need, you need internet connection at that spot. That's very important. If you want to follow me on Instagram, Battery Life one and if you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below and there's also a channel membership here on YouTube. But that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.